DHS has been paving the way for almost 30 years in caring for extremely complex, medically fragile children. Um, so our approach has generally been not, no, we can't do that, but rather, how can we do that? We felt that the investment in ensuring adequate preparation and training of our clinicians is the utmost of importance in order for us to achieve our mission which is to uh, provide very safe care. Simulations a critical component of training nurses. A lot of scenarios that occur in the home are not going to occur during orientation for instance. Some of those are what we call high stakes simulations. Those would be for an obstructed trach, a seizure, an autonomic storm, a respiratory arrest. All those type of high stakes scenarios require critical thinking skills and emergency interventions implemented immediately. We want our nurses to be competent and confident in those emergency scenarios that they can implement those critical thinking skills and emergency interventions immediately to minimize any compromise to that patient. Right here in Miami, Florida is where Pediatric Hal was developed. Now you can see that he's been developed to look like a real boy, certainly, but also to perform very real physiologic and anatomic functions that a normal patient would have. Everything all right today, buddy? You doing okay? And as you can see, Hal responds to me as well. And the reason we did that is because oftentimes children can't respond verbally to a physician's requests or the request from a respiratory therapist. In addition, pediatric HAL can essentially provide the same sort of results using real equipment that a real patient can. So I could hook him up to that ventilator right there, just as the folks here at PHS would. HAL's essentially a medical robot, and he's used for training, as we described, and so realistic to ensure that everyone's trained properly if, before they ever get to a patient. And we're proud to partner with PHS as one of the first users of Pediatric Hal worldwide. Usually we have two students come into the sim lab. Um, they'll come in and for two hours we'll do a skills lab. So we'll be in this room, we'll talk about maybe 20 different skills, um, go through how to use certain equipment, um, other training that they're going to need to know for each home they're in. After that two hour skills portion, um, we'll take a short break and then we go into another little conference room and we do a pre-brief because next the two students will go through um, two scenarios that we have set up right now with our high fidelity mannequins and then they'll start the scenario. So one student will go through the scenario and then the other student will go through the scenario both while in this room and then we'll go back to our little conference room and we'll do a little debrief. So debriefing is really where the learning takes place. It's where we review the footage of the simulation which is audio and video recorded. It's where uh, it's an everything that is done during the simulation is analyzed and what was done well, what wasn't done so well, what was missed, um, what kind of feelings and emotions were going through the nurses at the time. And again, that's really where we break down and where the nurses learn the most. It's really all about getting them that experience before they actually have to deal with it by themselves with a real human. This technology is going to help us not only train in the beginning phases when we have new employees going into patient homes, but it will also help us do annual competencies on our nurses. That's a requirement for us. This gives us an opportunity not only to have them say, do a return demonstration of a particular procedure, but we can actually observe them doing that procedure.